What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be having a look at my digital fashion starter pack that I just released on my site. I'm gonna be showing you how to use it with your brand to create cool 3D content for social media and advertisement. Let's get into the video. So the first thing you wanna do is head over to my website, dandedekin.com. All the links for everything will be in the description, so check it out there. Um, you're gonna be purchasing the digital fashion starter pack. There are two variations. So if you search up pack on my site, you'll see there is the main pack which is $15 and then the 360 rotation only pack so this doesn't include any of the open files if you're not too sure which one it is just read the description here and I'll show you what it's included um, so let's go back to the 3d markup bundle so in this bundle there are 12 different garments which you can edit in blender and then I've also given you the open files for Clo 3d so if you want to adjust them there uh, I'll show you how to do both those um, in a bit um, but what's included is the Blender file, FBX files for animation, um, as well as Avatar, texture files, Photoshop files, Alembic files, which is the final export for the animation, and then your Clo or Marvelous files, which you can edit in. Um, note that this bundle is 40 gigs, so it is quite a heavy file size just because of all the animations that are included in it. So for those who don't have good internet speed um, and don't really want those walking animations, you can check out the 360 only um, bundle. So once you've downloaded this, um, you're gonna need to download Blender, which is a free 3D application, which you can edit this bundle in. Um, then you're gonna need Photoshop for editing the designs, which is like when you add your branding on. If you don't have Photoshop or can't afford it, you can use Photopia, which is like a very similar application. So once you have that and you've downloaded the file, you'll see that when you open the file, you're going to have a garment, material, and project file. So in your garment file, this is where you'll have all your Clo 3D files, your OBJs, your FBXs, you name it. Um, so just to show you what one of the files look, they all look the same. They just have different garments in it. Uh, the crew neck, you'll see we have your two Photoshop files, which is where you're going to add your, your branding to, and then the open files. In here, we have your Clo file or your Marvelous file, and then the OBJs and Limbic files. But you're only going to be, if you are using the open files, you're only going to be using the Clo files. So you don't have to worry about anything else. If we go back out to materials, this is where your um, textures will be. Um, and then your ZFab, which is your digital fabrics for Clo or Marvelous, will be in here as well. Um, and then in your project file, we're going to have your avatar. So if you check out my previous video, um, this is where I go over like frame one, T pose, and your walking cycle. Um, you can use these for that, so I've already created it. Um, and then you have your Blender file, which is your main file. So let's open up the Blender file now, and I'll show you how everything works. So once the Blender file is open, um, you'll see on the top right that there is a scene one, scene two, scene three, and scene four. Uh, for scene one and two, uh, these are just static, like T-pose positions. Uh, scene one is this Drake-inspired um, angle so if you go to your viewport shader and you can click the material preview you'll see um, that it yeah it's a really unique angle um, if you check out drake related shop you can see all his stuff is at a similar angle this is what kind of inspired it uh, check that out it looks really cool um, so yeah for scene one it's this angle um, you'll see when we open up scene one folder on the top right you'll have your products which is all 12 of the garments, these will be in all of the scenes. Um, so if I just go over this quickly, you can see uh, we have oversized golf shirt, uh, your hoodie, um, which the hood is down, and then your hood down, oversized, and then a hood up, regular, and a hood up, oversized. We got longs, long oversized, shorts, regular t-shirt and then a t-shirt that is oversized so when you are wanting to render these just make sure that you select both the camera uh, and the eye this will allow you to render what you're seeing uh, i know sometimes people like they're busy working on this file but then they have like the hoodie down camera on and then they're like why is it rendering um differently this is why you must make sure if you if you want to render the crew neck just make sure that the eye and the camera is selected. And then when you go render image, you'll see exactly what you're seeing. 
Um, so let's go into scene two. For the changing of each scene, when you reveal it, uh, you must just make sure that you go down to this camera in that scene, um, click on it and then go view cameras, set active camera and it will change the angle from there. Okay, so now that we've changed to the scene two camera, we can reveal the crew neck oversize 360. Um, now what this does is it's just a T-pose, but um, it slowly rotates uh, in a linear motion, meaning that there's no like speed ramp. In all my previous tutorials, there has been a speed ramp. So I've taken this away uh, just because it looks better for marketing purposes. You will notice that at the bottom here, everything is at 300 frames, which is roughly around 10 seconds of footage. But because it's a 360 rotation, uh, you can just loop that and then it will obviously give you double the time. From here, you'll see we have all the same garments and they're all doing a 360 rotation. Uh, in scene three, uh, this is gonna be your walking cycle. So remember what I told you earlier, when you open up a scene, go down to the camera. So this is scene three uh, and you're gonna say view, set active and it will adjust the camera for you to how it should be. So once again, this is just a walking cycle. Uh, so this is front on. Uh, scene three is a front on walking cycle and then scene four is a 360 so we're going to hide scene three and reveal scene four go down to camera scene four view set active camera and then we're going to go to the product and let's reveal the crew neck oversize so this is doing a 360 while walking with all 12 of the garments okay so now what i'm going to do is show you how to update the product um, so for the crew neck, let's just go to frame zero, so it's front facing. We can see that it's indicated front, left, and right. And then if we go to around frame 150, we'll see that there's text back um, on the back, just so you know the positioning in the design. So from here, we're gonna be updating the design now. So we can go back into our project file, um, look for the Garmin folder, um, crew neck, and then if you're not too sure which one you're editing, just go up to crew neck, the layer and it says crew neck oversize so we're going to be editing the crew neck oversized photoshop file so let's go crew neck oversized and open that up so once we've opened this up we'll see that it has the exact same template that's in our 3d preview window so we've got left right front and back so to update this it's very simple we're going to take design logo that we want to use so i'm going to be using an abstract logo it's a brand i'm currently working with so let's scale this up and press enter to place it. If there's anything around that you don't want, for instance, this whole box, uh, we can use the paint tool because it's a smart object. If this smart object layer isn't there, you don't have to worry about that. Um, but I'll just use the paint tool to disable that. And then we can use the rectangle tool to just select and press delete to delete uh, the edges. Once we're happy with that, we can then place it and then just copy by pressing Control C and V, and we're gonna place this on our garment. To rotate it, you can press Control T and then go up to the top here and just change this to minus 90. Press it, done. And then press Control V again, copy paste, Control T, and let's change this to 180 and press Enter. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide all these text files. So the left, front, back, and right on the bottom right, just so that we can get rid of that. From here, you can press save, and then we can go straight back into Blender. The first thing you'll notice is that it hasn't been updated. Um, so to fix this, we can go into our shader editor. We're just gonna go to open image, and then look for crew neck oversize and open image. And if it doesn't adjust straight away, uh, we can go to the viewport shader, change it. You'll see that it updates and then go back to the material um, preview. And just like that, it's been updated. Sometimes it does do this, it is a bit weird. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things, free to use software. If you're wanting to adjust the color of the garment, uh, we can go back into the Photoshop file and we can go to your color layer down at the bottom here. So if we double click on this layer, uh, it will open up a color picker and we can choose whichever color we wanna go from there. So maybe we want like a, a blue, blue pink, press okay, hit save. And then when we go 
into our Blender file and we hit refresh, it'll be updated to that color. Uh, and it still has a texture and it looks great. Um, so one thing that you'll notice is that the, the garment is texturized. As you can see, it looks like a fabric. So if you want to make this bigger or smaller, uh, you can just go over to your value over here in the shader editor, uh, zoom in. And if you set it to 20, you'll notice how it, it's already gotten bigger. And if you set it to 10, it's gotten even bit bigger. So you can adjust it and make it suit the look of your uh, garment, I guess. So I'm gonna just set this to 25. And then just like that, you have your garment ready to export. So once we've updated this material, in the material tab, you'll see here that it's called crewneck oversight underscore main. So this is gonna update all your crewneck oversized um, garments. So if we go to scene one, it's hand scene four. Um, and then we go to crew neck oversized. You'll see that it's it's already updated that in scene four. Uh, let's just change the camera angle. One thing you will notice is that it's lost its texturing. Um, so to fix this, we can go into the shader editor and then under normal map, you'll see that it's red. So just click on that and press UV map uh, and it will be updated to how it was in scene four. Um, so let's go back to scene four just so I can show you the export settings. Um, so let's reveal that camera scene, view set active camera and it'll be updated. So for the export settings, um, depending on your PC, if we go to the, the middle here on the right side, the render properties, make sure it's on cycles, supported GPU. If you don't have a GPU, set it to CPU. Um, and then your max samples, depending on your PC, I can normally go to about a thousand um, and it won't take too long. But I would suggest maybe like 128, 200, 300, um, depending on your PC, obviously. You can always test this by pressing render and then go render image and then it'll show you um, how long it's going to take to render one frame. So that took five seconds to render one frame. So you can times that by 300 to get your estimated like final render time. So obviously if you put out a thousand, it's going to be much longer than five seconds of frame. So just remember what we did to scene one, we changed the UV uh, map. So let's go back to our shader editor and just update this back to the crew neck in scene four, and then we'll have our textures. So for this, uh, I'm gonna be rendering at 200 samples. Um, so leave everything as is, and then go to output, uh, depending on your resolution, 1920 by 1080 is perfect. What, what I have noticed is some people are like, when I zoom in, it doesn't look good, but you don't zoom in on a video, so don't worry about that. It still looks really good as a final product, I'll show you now. Uh, we're going to do frame 0 to 300 um, and then if you scroll down here to the output settings uh, we can press this little file here and choose our location so i've already rendered this out um, so i'm just going to drop it here press accept uh, then we can go down to file format we're going to change it from png to ffmpeg video this is going to give you a video export and then by encoding here on the bottom right, we're going to press the FFmpeg presets and set it to H.264 and MP4. This is going to give you an MP4 export, which is what we'd like um, if we're not using any um, video editing software. Um, from here, we can go to the top left, press render and hit render animation. Once your render has complete, um, you'll see that it will be around 10 seconds. So when we hover over here, we can see it says 10 seconds. It's about one megabyte in size. And you can open that up and you'll see everything is running smoothly. Um, and this is around 200 samples. So the quality is still pretty good, especially if you're viewing on your phone. I do prefer to use PNG exporting. So to do that, um, for those that do have like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve and know how to video edit, uh, let's change the file format to PNG. This will just give you a higher image uh, resolution and will look a whole lot better. Um, so if you change it to PNG and then you run your render animation, it's going to give you an image sequence. And from here, we're going to import into Premiere Pro via image sequence. 
uh, and it will just be a lot higher quality and look a lot better but i know some people don't have video editing software so this will give you like your result which you can add on your phone and then edit it or add music there so just going over the output settings if you want to make it vertical you can set this to 1080 by 1920 and uh, there you have your phone resolution i'm just going to leave it at 1920 by 1080 for now so i'm going to just be going a little bit more to detail what this package includes now uh, this is kind of the intermediate phase of the video if you're not too familiar with blender maybe stick around you can learn a couple of extra things but if you do know what's going on this will help you a lot with this bundle just to take it and customize a little bit further so the first thing we're going to do is go into scene two uh, let's change the camera angle and this is only going to apply to our scene one and two you won't be able to make these changes anywhere else just because if you change the walking animation it's going to mess up everything uh, so if we go into our 3d viewport area we'll be able to now like go into edit mode and adjust the garment so maybe you want to make it a little bit smaller around the waist so that we can go up to the top right here toggle x-ray mode and just select where we want and using proportional editing so if you go up to the top here click proportional editing or zero we can press s on the keyboard and this will allow us to scale the waist down so you can do this with any part of the garment just remember you can't do it with the walking garments so if we scroll on a wheel it's going to make the proportional editor area bigger which is what we want just so we can scale more of the garment and then we can just start to bring it in a little bit so this is how you're going to customize it in blender obviously this isn't the best route um, you can edit in clo 3d which i'll show you now how to do so we're just going to make sleeves a little bit smaller so let's scale this as well and just like that we've made the sleeves smaller now so these are just small adjustments that you can make to the garments okay i'm not going to be showing you how to edit these garments in clo 3d or marvelous designer i'm going to do um, a basic button up and then also like a tighter version of the t-shirt um, so let's go into our t-shirt open files we're going to do the regular t-shirt so let's open that up now you can apply these changes to any of the garments so if you want to add a button up to the hoodie or to the long sleeve you can do the same thing this is just a beginner's guide on how to adjust the garments in clear 3d if you do want to make adjustments and then bring it into blender and make your own 3d markup from there okay so once you open up the clear 3d file we'll see that we have an avatar with the shirt uh, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to make a tighter version of the shirt. It's almost like a sportswear. Uh, so we can select the entire pattern in our 2D pattern window. And let's adjust the weft as well as the warp to 50%. And we can go to the top left and hit simulate. And you'll see that it's already a lot tighter. Um, so to fix this and bring the crop down a bit, let's select the middle portion of the garment and let's change the warp back to 100 and you'll now see that the shirt inside has become a lot tighter okay so that's kind of how you do a sports tee um, you can do this to the long sleeve as well to the pants pretty much the same thing it's just adjusting the the weft or the warp so weft is your left to right tightness and then your warp is your top to bottom tightness so if you're happy with that we can go and export it now so let's just make sure that the uv is correct so we go to uv editor because we didn't make any adjustments to the pattern itself this will be exactly the same as our regular t-shirt uh, so what we can do now is go to file export obj uh, let's go into our t-shirt folder and we can call this t-shirt sports and hit save uh, we're going to select all patterns and graphic and trims deselect all avatars make sure it's on thick and keep the settings as is make sure the diffuse map is on and hit okay okay so once that is done uh, we can go back into our blender file uh, let's go to our scene two so we're already there we're going to hide this product and let's go file imports obj let's go to our garment t-shirt and t-shirt sports and hit import 
um, and you'll see that it comes into the window. We can press G followed by Y to bring the shirt down. And then once it's here, we can now add the material uh, that we had to the shirt because the UV is exactly the same. If you do change the UV, I'll show you how to do that um, when we make the, the button up. But for now, we're going to go into the material tab and we're going to click on the bottom material and go to the right and press minus. So we'll remove it and bring it up to the next slot and we can do the exact same thing again. Uh, then we can go down to your browser material and let's go t-shirt stitching. This is the color of the stitching. And then for the main section of the garment, we can go to your browser material and to go t-shirt uh, underscore main and do the same for the next one t-shirt underscore main and just like that it'll be updated and then when we update the t-shirt file in photoshop which i'll do right now quickly for you um, so this is just your regular I'm gonna update this bring in that same logo that we did um, for the crew neck you can go front back i'm not going to put on the sleeves we can hide the logo examples, hit save. And then when we go back into Blender and we refresh the preview window, you'll now see we have our logo on our tight t-shirt. Don't forget to update the normal map in the shader editor, just so we get that more realistic look um, and we are good to go. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to make a button up from the clo files. So we can open up the t-shirt regular again. So let's go project, t-shirt regular, go into simulation. To create buttons down the middle of the shirt, we're gonna press the internal polygon tool, which is G, and then we're just gonna click down the middle and press enter to place it, and then also on the ribbon, we can press enter and place it. We're then gonna press Z on our keyboard and right click and say cut. And then we're gonna do the same for the ribbing at the top, right click and say cut. Um, so nothing will happen at first, but when we hit simulate, you'll see that it does separate. Uh, so this is kind of gonna be the center of our garment. Uh, we can now just separate this in the 2D pattern window. So if we press A on our keyboard, it will change to our select tool and we can just drag this across. And now we're gonna press C on our keyboard again. We're gonna select these outside lines, right click, and set offset pattern outline. Set this to about 25 and make sure you say create internal line and press okay. We're now gonna add some buttons. So if we go to the left here, we can select the button. I'm just gonna do one on the top and maybe like th three or four more. Cool. And then we're gonna create the button holes. You can use the fasten button to join the buttons to the holes, like so. And then the last thing we're gonna do is press N on our keyboard to sew the internal line to the external line, just so that the seal is a bit better. Um, I know it's not technically accurate, but it just helps the garments stick together, especially when animating. Um, so if we hit simulate, you'll now see that we have a garment with buttons. Uh, we can just bring this out a bit so that everything looks good. Do the same to this. If you do see the, the fabrics overlapping like this, uh, we can go to our 2D pattern window and we're gonna use the set sublayer tool. So what this basically does is the first pattern that you click on uh, will be the top layer of the pattern so the right side is going to be above the left side so let's select the right side and then hit the left and do the same thing for the top of the garment and the bottom and then when you hit simulate it should now just flow a lot better and then just to clean this up we're going to press n on our keyboard and so so the torso to the top as well as the bottom and hit simulate and you'll see cleans up and then if you don't like these this button size uh, we can just go to the button window um, on the top right here click on our button 
um, and you can select your different shape here so I'm just going to select this one and change the width to 10 make it a little bit smaller and then let's go to the button hole click on default button and change the width to 10 here as well maybe even 8 and hit simulate and just like that we have the button up T okay from here we're going to go to our UV editor um, because the UV has been adjusted we just need to make sure everything is in the first UV square. Right click and say reset UV to 2D arrangement. And then we can just select all and reposition it back into the square. So let's drag this to this side and let's drag this till we're happy. It's always best to almost separate the top just so that if there is any overlapping, we can adjust it in Photoshop easier. Okay, so once that's done, we can go back to our simulation, go file, export, OBJ. This is gonna be our t-shirt button. Press enter, deselect, select all avatars, make sure thick is on, diffuse map, and then hit, okay. We can go back into Blender now, hide this sports t-shirt, Import, OBJ, T-shirt button, import, and G on our keyboard, followed by Y to bring it down. And then we can change the materials. Okay, so just like we did for the T-shirt, the sports T-shirt, we're gonna look for our stitching. So because this one has buttons, uh, we just need to figure out which one that is. So if we go to our material mode, preview into our shader editor. If we deselect the base color, we can see what's changing color. So let's ch change this to pink. So this must be one of our stitchings. Uh, let's change another one. Let's change this to blue. As you can see, that's stitching as well. And then let's just connect this and change this to green. And there, we found our buttons. So we can rename this material uh, to buttons and then we can Press minus on the racha to move it up and change this to t-shirt stitching. And then these are gonna be our t-shirt main. Um, and t-shirt main. So as you can see, it's not, the UV isn't linking. So what we're gonna do here is duplicate this layer and change it to t-shirt button main and do that for this other material changes to t-shirt button main um, we can go into our shader editor here and we're going to select open image we're going to go to our t-shirt and look for button diffuse this is going to be for this specific comment so we can say open that and you'll see it automatically updates uh, now to make this the design we want it to be um, go to our Go to our t-shirt, look for the button diffuse, right click and say open in Photoshop. And you'll see that we have similar layout to our t-shirt, which I created a Photoshop file for. So to adjust this, let's grab one of these logos, bring it in, scale it. Let's put this over here. And then we're gonna click on layer one and go to our rectangle tool and Make sure that our fill is a white or eggshell color. Select over the entire thing, then go down to our layer, right click and say, create clipping mask. You can then hit save. Uh, and we're gonna call this t-shirt button underscore design. And hit okay. Then when we go back into Blender, uh, we can relink this. So let's go open image t-shirt button design open image and it should be adjusted perfectly and then let's change our button color to darker maybe black it's looking good and then i'm going to reduce this roughness just so it looks a little bit shinier and more realistic and just like that we have a button up t-shirt from my clo 3d files next thing i'm going to show you is how to make this rotate in a 360 animation so to do this, we can press R on our keyboard. Make sure you are on the first frame. Press R on the keyboard followed by Y, and then we're gonna hit zero. This is gonna set your first keyframe 
to be zero degrees rotation, R standing for rotation. Then we're gonna go to frame 300 at the bottom here. And we're gonna do the same thing. So press R, Y, and hit 360. And it's gonna set your end frame to be 360 degrees rotation. Um, so if we, if we preview this quickly, you'll see that it's slowly rotating around like so. Now this is gonna be in a bell shape um, speed ramp. So the beginning will be slow and then it'll go faster and then slow. To change this, we can right click down here in our timeline and we're gonna say interpolation mode, set it to linear. So currently it's in Bezier, but so we're gonna change it to linear and it will be a, a lot smoother, consistent animation. If you wanna adjust the lights in this file, you can just click on any one of these lights. Uh, so obviously there are certain lights for different scenes. So these will be the lights in scene two. Um, so if you click on the lights here and you go down to your data setting, it's normally like an icon of a light. We can change the power over here to make it brighter or darker, however you want. Um, if you want to add more lights, you can press Shift A and add other points, sun, spots, area. I normally work with areas um, and you can just add that in like that. Um, and then to change the background, if you click on any of the backgrounds um, and go to your base color in the, in, the, in the shader editor, you can just change it around like this and it should be updated. If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to drop a like, comment, and sub. If you're new yet, don't forget to turn the notification bell on. If you need any help, make sure to join the Discord, drop a question in general or help forum. Or if you have an issue with the product, open a support ticket and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, you can also drop me an email, but I respond a lot quicker in Discord as I'm pretty much on it every day. And then don't forget to check out my previous tutorial where I go through a whole process on how to create an animation, how to use my 3D mockups to import into Clo 3D to create your animation. Um, there's a bunch of cool stuff on my site that you can check out as well. Use code 1K subs to get 20% off orders over $5. Um, and I thank you guys for the support as always. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.